<laughs> What's up, SLH community? <laughs> We're back with another podcast episode <laughs> um, of Book Talk. So earlier we smoked. So <laughs> I'm still alive. Such a weakling. And look, I'm still alive. <laughs> so today we have uh, an amazing woman who is a mother, an entrepreneur, and uh, a super caring person, super nice, super sweet, um, and a very, very hard worker. <laughs> uh, Marcella! Beep. My name is Marcella. Well, my name is Marcella Alvarado. I go by Marcella. A lot of people know me as Marcella Latin Babe. Mm-mm, that was me. <laughs> um, my, my Instagram right now, it's, it's Marcella Babe. And it's verified, just in case, you know, catfish and stuff. <laughs> um, well, I wish I was known for that more than me being on Playboy and, and showing my pretty curves online. Um, I love the idea of doing this podcast because I feel like I don't ever get to talk too much about who I am. Right. You know? That's what we're here for. Uh, yeah, and there's so much more to that. <laughs> so um, I'm very glad that we're here. Me too. Me Let's too. see what's up. <laughs> so you guys know how we, we do it. We talk about healing. We talk about life, uh, what's going on in the world, all that good stuff. Uh, and it's really so you know that you're not the only one out there that, you know, goes through certain things in life. And, you know, just so you could get another view of somebody else's life that you may think is a thousand million times more better than yours you know mm-hmm. because when uh they see certain people they just assume that they just have this super amazing life and nothing ever goes wrong and there's no real pain and nothing to heal from like mm-hmm. everybody else and um you know we're just here to you know share you know not necessarily share full-on super details if not if, you know too personal but just to let people know that um we do. We all, we do all go things. through something. Yeah, we all go through something. We all have things that we heal from. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And I'm going to be rubbing on my face for a minute because my allergies have been killing me. Y'all know yesterday I had an allergy attack and it was crazy. You know how much I sympathize with you because that has been a problem of mine for so many years. <laughs> People knew how many health issues one, you know, one person can go through. And that is so, so bad. Allergies are I know, like when I met you, I remember you used to get like so many shots. I was like on your arm or something, on your hand. I did. Well, I ha- I used to have uh, four shots total, so mm-hmm. it was two in each arm, and I did that for over four years straight every week. Yeah, <laughs> that was that was brutal. Yeah. and that is to say that a lot changed. Not really. So I I think that maybe it was way more to it. You know, my diet and a bunch of other things, but anyway, you know, I I went through hell and back, and now I I had to postpone that because I got tired of it. Right. But um, I mean, I'm still dying from allergies every now and then, so I I deal with it. You should, you should, you should, oh wait, but I changed. You know, somebody told me about honey. Somebody said that honey is a great, great, great the tool. Enzymes. Yes. That helps. I said, wait, wait, you want to take a spoon of honey? And we can do that. Let's take a spoon. Let's honey take a spoon right of honey. Let's, let's do that. that. Okay. Hold on. All right. All right. So, uh, Marcella. Yeah. Um, where Where were you born? I am from Costa Rica. Mm. Beautiful Costa Rica. Uh, for those that don't know where Costa Rica is, it's in Central America. Okay. Right below Panama. Actually, no, that's not right. Above Panama, <laughs> I mix, I'm a little high too. I mix the, the below and above. I'm like, wait a minute, no, it's above Panama. Yeah, I will say Mexico. Mm-hmm. It's the little tiny bridge that connects yeah. the south and to the north, even though Panama is still part of the central, considered Central America. But yeah, I'm from San Jose, Costa Rica, I'm from the capital. Um, maybe. I live 30 minutes maybe outside of the city, mm. um, in a very small little nothing 
neighborhood. <laughs> so, so, you, so you, did you grow up? Was it like third world style? Or? Yeah, very much so. Yeah. Yeah. How long were you living out there? Yeah, I well, I live. I mean, I don't, I don't know if I could say thankfully. It's just how life, you know, turned out. Yeah. But I lived there until I was 15 years old, mm. I believe. So at that at that moment, we my siblings and I moved to New York. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I was uh, transitioned from like Costa Rica, but the tropics to yeah. New York City, cold and gloomy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Well, actually, uh, the funny thing is that when I moved was in June, mm. so the summer was just about you okay. know was about to start, and also we were in upstate New York, mm. and there uh, there was this tiny little town called um, Woodsboro. Mm-hmm. And um, I went to Monticello High School for anybody that knows what the area is. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so it was in the upstate area, you know, there was lakes nearby and things like that. Beautiful, uh, but uh, very cold. Yeah. So, I mean, but transition in the, the summer was hotter than I was used to, too, you know what I mean? In San Jose, it wasn't as hot at the time. And the summer was very hot. Right. Yeah. I also gain weight <laughs> like so fast I don't think I ever gained weight <laughs> that fast in my entire life and when I think about what I love the most the people that I love the most I get very in touch with you know uh, with myself yeah, so tell so, me okay so Costa um, Rica until you were 15 yes and um you know, there are some things that happen that, you know, carried over. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. I feel like everything that happens to you in your childhood marks you forever. Especially um, all the things that you never fully address, mm-hmm. you know. Which I, I feel like most people in my generation, um, and definitely coming from a third world country, you know, where... You know, you just stuff it up. <laughs> you know, there's no such thing as bullying. Like, I mean, all the new ways of living and how people are so. I I I don't know if I could even say like soft mm-hmm. because who am I to say whether right now is the wrong way to be or the right way to be? You know, what I can say is from experience that a lot of things are happening. You do toughen up and they do help. You know, mm-hmm. as as you become an adult and um. And right now, a lot of people are way, way softer than that, mm-hmm. you know, and that's why I feel like life is harder for not a, lot of, a lot of people. Those dark, those dark times that like carried over to your adulthood, they like really affected you, in Costa, like from Costa Rica. Yeah. Like what were those? What were yeah. those things that like that you know like these are scars, these are scars that you know it took some time to heal. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> so every yeah, everything that that happens to you when when you're a child. Oh, that's where I was going, that a lot of the times we, especially where we come from, you know, we don't have the access to even sit down and think about what just happened to you, you know, and address the situation. I don't think that this problem that you are going through is going to affect you in the future, you know, in how how you make decisions, Mm -hmm. how... No matter. Very good. Um, and how um, how you allow yourself how you allow yourself to be treated by other people as well and everything marks you and you don't know and it could go for something as simple as um, thinking that you're not uh, liked or loved enough by your family members, you know, when you're growing up, you know. And um when you think when when someone makes you feel like you that just by being you and existing is not enough, then you start thinking about everything that you need to overcompensate yeah. for the lack of love that you are fully aware that it's not there, that's not happening, that that you see it so effortlessly, you know, among your other siblings or Cousins, or you know, yeah. and you see it around you, it is in front of you, and uh, 
And it could be something as simple as that, that, that you live your life, you start your life by overdoing it, you know. I wanted to always do the dishes. I hated doing the dishes. Mm -hmm. But you better believe I'll be the first person. I got it. I'll do it. What else do you need to do? So I'm not being flourished. I'll, what else? But what I'm else? Trying to, you, were, you, like, you started becoming more of a people pleaser. Yes, exactly. So that, and how many of us as adults are exactly that? Mm. And how many relationships, you know, wrong relationships we get into because we fully forget about who we are because we're just a people pleaser. So we decide to just be there for whatever the other person wants us to be. Mm. And we forget about who we are and whatever we like, you know, whatever it is that we are. It doesn't matter because we start living for another person's happiness. So... Would it be safe to say that, you know, you never really felt like you were enough? Yes. And that, you know, so through that, you know, you may have had um, certain relationships with people that it didn't make you feel enough and that you just kept following those relationships yes. because, well, you know, that... that it's familiar. Right. I feel like exactly. everything that, that when you grow up with this feeling that this is kind of all you know, mm -hmm. then yes, then you unconsciously you know, follow whatever feels familiar because it feels safe, mm. as bad as it is, mm. as, as much as you know that it's not right, mm. you always have this hope that it, things will change when you know, like, you know, deep, deep inside we know that it's not like that, we know that it's not going to change, we know, I mean, we know what the situation is, but we are okay to put it out with it, I don't, I don't know why, I Oh, I do know why. <laughs> like I said, it all starts. It all starts from there. Yeah. And and just in it just shows in different scenarios in your life. You know, whether it's with your coworkers, with your friends, with your life partner, with your children, parents. Yeah. It's, it's different, but you do. You know. Do you do you know that you're enough now? Um. Sometimes. I think sometimes I think so. Like that, that's something that I've been working on a lot for the past two years. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I have grown so much and it's a lot more peaceful in my mind and, and in my heart. A lot more. Like I'm okay and I'm at peace with a lot of situations that have happened in the past. Mm -hmm. You know, that kind of haunted me for a long time. Or a lot of things that I always, always blame myself for that now I can see that was crazy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And uh, most of the things were not my fault. And, you know, especially during my childhood, you know, more right. teenager, things like that. Um, I, I didn't know any better for a lot of these moments. And, and I always been, very hard on myself and because I'm so hard on myself I don't love myself enough mm -hmm. because I'm always I cannot accept that I'm actually just that I'm good right great thank you I'm great I really am and um it's sometimes even just taking that uh that compliment right there is difficult mm -hmm. and it's funny because I am, um, you know, I have a little fame on social media, you know, have a, a following, whatever you want to call it. People that like me for whatever the reason they like me, but they like me. Mm -hmm. And um, and as many compliments as I could possibly get, you know, when I'm online constantly, as you can imagine, you know, day in, day out by the hundreds. Which I'm very grateful for, obviously, you know. But a lot of those things become so repetitive on you know, a day to day, yeah. you know. That when you talk to a person that sees you for who you are, because I also feel like, as much, like I wish, I wish everybody knew who I really was. You yeah. know what I mean? Right. Yeah. And um, but there's only so much that can be shown or be said before anyone interprets anything however they want to, you know? Or if they even care or value what I have to say. 
which is okay. I mean, trust me, I get it, you know? You don't have to like me like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's all good. Um, but it's good to be heard sometimes. Yeah. It feels nice. And whenever I do get a, a true personal and like compliment, something is just as that, let me correct you right there. Yeah. Cause no, you're not just good. You're okay. great. You see, I felt that like that. Yeah. And I'm great. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I know you do. That's, a, that's exactly what I mean. Like, yeah. It's a difference. Right. Yeah. So thank you for that. Would you be open to doing an experiment? Um, uh, an experiment. Yeah. Uh, Steps up doing, uh, doing the mirror talk. The mirror talk. Yeah. Ooh. If it, if you if you if you feel uncomfortable, we'll stop. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if I'm ready for that. <laughs> I wasn't ready to face me like that. I'm just being honest. I'm no, not. Okay. Sometimes with certain things, I, I'm going at my own pace when it comes yeah. to, you know, facing yeah. certain situations. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I had to, I had to ask. You're, you're, you're open to do it. You can change your mind cool. No. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'll think about it. Just, you know, just like, wait a minute. You know? Yeah. Um. Thank you for sharing that. Mm. That, was, that was beautiful. Um, that was so, I mean, it was everything I knew it was going to be, to be honest with you. Mm. You know, I personally, um, like, I, I always see a lot more, of course, than yeah. what you, you know, what you portray. You yeah. know, like, I know that for a lot of individuals, you might be their fantasy. Mm. You know, and um, I get to see the goofy side. <laughs> yes. You know, and the, and the cry baby side, <laughs> the forgetful I'm side. All, I'm all that yep. anymore. Yep. Yep. You know, <laughs> you're my I, friend, you know. Yeah. So, um, you know, so I, you know, and that's why I thought it was really important for, uh, for us to sit down because, um, that's what this is about. That's what, you know, mm. the, uh, podcast is about. 50 Step Ceiling is about, you know, being honest with yourself. Mm. And, Showing that vulnerable side of yourself and getting uncomfortable. Yeah. You know, it's not, you know, it's, it's, not, not, easy it's to, not easy. It's not easy to face a certain no. thing. I kind of, I kind of really need it's, yeah. it's a difficult thing. Yeah. And sometimes you need help. And that's why I'm here is mm-hmm. to, is to help. Mm-hmm. Um, two things. Uh, and this is in regards to, um, you know, message to yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the first thing is I actually would say, if you were asked, if you uh, could go back in the, in the past and talk to you know, that self that started to feel like you weren't good enough for everybody or anybody in your family, mm-hmm. what would you what would you tell that little girl that you feel would save her life or change her life for the better? You only have one minute, 60 seconds. To say something to her before you'll never see that younger self, and she's gonna grow up and become who she's gonna come. Just whatever's gonna come to your mind, right? Now. <laughs> oh my god! I would say your mom will always be your best friend. Ever doubt that? And I would say that you will become everything that you ever dreamed of. And sometimes it takes time. Like you're smiling because you're goofy and you like to smile, so don't forget to smile. And don't forget to live through the struggle. You'll be okay. That was beautiful. That was only 30 seconds. Well, <laughs> my, <Yeah>. well <laughs> um, yeah, that was hard to even say it out yeah, loud. Yeah, that. <laughs> Yeah, my my lashes. Yeah, you got to say I I need to stop crying. I, I pay a whole lot of money for this, <laughs> bitches. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> so you know, a, I'm about for anybody know coming later on. Yes, I'm about to lose half of them right now. I'm just crying. Oh Jesus! <laughs> but yeah, that, that was, was beautiful. That, that was, was beautiful. That was thirty seconds. Mm-hmm. So you know. The message was clear, and coming from you and seeing you, um, that like thirty seconds is enough to you know that you just changed that little girl's life, you know. Mm-hmm. And some mom 
that may be so busy working yeah. uh, and moving around may not realize that, hey, I need to give my daughter a little bit more attention and let her know what you just said. So somebody in the community just got blessed with the words that they need to, to talk to their daughter. Yeah. Sometimes we, I feel like we lose ourselves and um, we get so hyped and certain people and then we forget about what really matters and the people that will be there no matter what, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, and I was one of those people. <laughs> We're making a collection of my yeah, life. You can put them back in there. <laughs> <laughs> I do not reuse them. It doesn't work for me. Like that, but okay. <laughs> this is better than the carpet. It's okay. <laughs> so, yeah, we forget. And I was, I was one of those people where I, I forgot, you know, for, for a while, mm. you know. And my mom is an expo- example of that. Mm-hmm. You know, we, I, for a while, I was, I was married for some time. And, um, and my entire focus became, became that marriage mm-hmm. you know, for many, many years. But I distanced it in, in this, this case, I distanced myself a lot from my family and from my mom. You know, we wouldn't talk too much and, you know. And then I feel like even we were not getting so well along, you know, like, but I, to the point, but I wasn't even caring too much. Like, you know, it was it was time where I was like, oh, I have everything I have with this one man. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Horrible. It was horrible. Like, what was I thinking? I mean, well, obviously I was young, stupid. It's another. I started very early. This is in my early twenties. I'm saying so. I eventually corrected that. You know, as my years went on, but I got lost. You know, I got lost in translation there, and uh, and the one thing that I look back now, I feel like. I don't know what I would have done without my mom, you know, and I feel like, and I'm, I'm grateful that she allowed me to live my life the way I wanted to live it at the moment in time, you yeah. know, when I decided to move out and marry this guy and leave, and, you know, um, just whatever journey I went on, whether it was difficult or not, it was supposed to be my, it was my journey. All right. So I had to go through it, and she allowed me that, and um, you know, whatever. Grateful. And from that moment on, too, like I feel like she's my number one fan. Really, like I don't, I don't, I don't. I, don't, I feel that like I personally don't feel like I do anything wrong other than being annoying bitch sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, um, I overthink. I, you know. I, it's hard to control my emotions sometimes. I'm a Capricorn, I'm, you know. Yeah, <laughs> but other than that, I mean, for the most part, I'm a pretty okay person. She was always there for me at the time, and I didn't quite realize it because I was in my own bubble. Right. And, and it was, I uh, probably did. I was kids, you know, we're always kids to our We don't our appreciate parents. our parents yeah. enough until we actually start, yeah, until we're older, we actually start experiencing a lot of things that you go like, then you know, like, there are moments in your life when you know that the only person you want to hear from is your mom right. or your dad or, or wh- whatever, whoever figure, you know, you have in right. your life that, that represents that right. type of trust and love, right? Um, so in my case, for me, it's her. And the, the fact that, that she's alive, the fact that I'm capable of picking on the phone, telling her anything about anything that goes on with me, you know, Whatever it is that I'm going through, and and that she always listens, and she always has an, an answer. Those are the things that I feel like I'm not enough grateful for. Mm. Then I need to do better at because I feel like we get soaked up in so many things that don't matter, and that what I just said is what so many people wish that they had. Mm-hmm. And I took it for granted for so long because I had it, I didn't use it, I didn't soak in it, yeah. you know. And I cannot take those years back, but I can only make the future better, you know. I so now I'm a fully different person, you know, and I'm very, very way more connected with the mom that I ever been in my life. Yeah. And uh, and I'm trying to make sure that she has the best life that she's ever had for as long as she's alive. Yeah. Um that's really all that matters. This 
the family for me, my my mom, my siblings, and you know my kids. You know, they're very my close circle. I have a small circle of friends as well, and they all play an important part of my life, and they're great. They're all great, and that's okay, you know. And mm -hmm. I and I keep it to myself, and I'm very chill. It's just it's just quiet, and I like it because it's, it can get loud here. So really loud. get really loud. Last thing, uh -huh. you know, close it out is uh the message to your future self you talk to your you talk to your your uh you know your your, your younger self and it got long it got long yeah. sorry <laughs> uh, i forgot my bed <laughs> um, now is the message to your future self uh you know this person who you are a year from now right today is what uh january 18th yeah. So 2025, January 18th. What, what is the message that you have to your future self? So this time next year, when this, when this, uh, episode pops back up, uh huh, and you're tagged, what do you, what do you want to be telling yourself? Um, about life, about how things are going, what you look, what you look forward to this year. Well, I would say that I, that as I know, <laughs> as I know, <laughs> you, I, you, yeah. uh, as we know, um, I have a lot of traveling plan for this year. I, I have projects and I have things. It's very important for me in my personal health, you know, um, that I dive into things that I love more. That they're gonna be me more pleasure in life than just money. I feel like last year I, I mean, I needed it, but I focus a lot on work, way, way more than I, that is healthy to even think about. So I want to do better for me. I recently had a big birthday. I recently turned 40. And I used to, <laughs> woohoo, yes. I used to dread, like I used to think about it and I was like, <sighs> Like, I was joy. Like, why, God? <laughs> or friends? Why, God? <laughs> or whoever. Why? You know, like, it, it felt like that for the longest time. But then when, when it got here, I don't know how to explain it to you, but it got, it got very quiet in, in a very good way. Like, I was like, for some, yeah, I, I don't know. It was, it was like something, like, it just flipped on me. Like, I don't, I really don't know how to explain it, but to the point where I'm, I'm so at peace with so many things. So the only thing that I could hope that my future self sees this is that I was able to do it again mm -hmm. because I feel like no matter what I go through, it was terrible as it seems sometimes and the struggles and and things somehow I always make shit happen. And you'll make shit happen type of moment. <laughs> so I hope that when I look back on this, I could be like, make shit happen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, feel bad this year one though. What is it? I did do that. I did say, you know, I, whatever. I, I did. I did it. You know, and um. And I just want to be a testament of that. But I need to make sure that I pour more into me. Because if I'm not okay, the people that I care about won't be either. Mm, that's important. So, yeah. So I want to pour more into me and into the people that are interested in pouring into me as well. Thanks. And that's why we got the book. <laughs> that's why the book Take is the great. Steps, yes, you know it's really great. And um, it's really great. Yeah. You guys need to have a listen. It's uh, when I tell you that I can relate. It's an understatement, and um, when I feel like a lot of people find it very valuable. So way to go. Besides my friend, uh, yeah, we yeah, yeah. have to be sure we're part of that's awesome. Well, thank you, Marcella, for My this pleasure. amazing episode. Uh, I'm excited just uh, for some people to see it because mm -hmm. this is the side.
you know, with this yes. eye. And we don't want to get to see. By the way, you know, if I must say, I, I, I gotta accept. I am a crybaby. I cried a lot. I know. I know. That's okay. okay? This, is, this is the time to cry. Yes, this I know. But I am a. I really do kind of work with my heart. You know, my my sleeve or whatever. So I um, I just feel things and I allow myself to feel them because I feel like you clear your soul that way. You know, yeah. and whatever it is, feel it. That's how it needs to come out and let it come out. There's nothing wrong with that. We're showing emotion. So that's all I got to say about that. There you go. <laughs> all right, guys. You know the deal. Make sure you share this community with your family, your friends, and your enemies. Also, make sure you tell them to get the book, 50 Steps to Healing. See you later.